večer, já vás vítám u předposledního dne inspiračního fóra. Dnes se v obou našich programech budeme věnovat the inspiration forum. technologií, které jsme nazvali v rytmu on, um, technology. Tak debata neviditelné emise. Já připomenu pro ty, kteří nás Facebook i kanále Inspiračního fóra, že svoje komentáře můžete you can leave pod your comments živý stream. Below the stream section. And now let me introduce our guests in the studio and online. And I'll give the floor to Ondřej Šebestík, Radio Wave commentator. Good evening. Thank you for the introduction. I will introduce. I would like to welcome viewers of today's unconventional debate because we have one guest in the studio and a host somewhere else connected via Zoom. We will discuss the topic of invisible emissions, which is, in my view, a very topical issue because. Uh, technology and uh, other uh, devices have a great impact on our perceptions with the automation, the volume of hardware uh, we use increases and so does data we produce and so does also our carbon footprint. The questions uh, of environmental issues uh, raised with in connections to technologies will be answered by Karolina Bratsova, who focuses on toxic substances uh, on the Czech and European market within her organization Arnika. So, hello, good evening. And the second guest answering this question will be Viktor Trebitsky, who has focused on ecology, sustainable development in his non-profit organization CI2. He uh, popularized the notion of carbon footprint. Hello and good evening. Mm, tahle debata bude probíhat trošku jiným uh formátu než se myslelo za prvý měla We will uh, slightly change the format of today's discussion because um, the debate was originally supposed to be hosted by Eva Svobodová and uh, Lukáš Lukačič was uh, Luka, Lukavčan were suppo was, was supposed to be here too but we will change it and I think it will be fine so, uh, Victor, tell me, should I probably close my laptop, uh, send you a letter and go play a game of chess? Or our planet will cope with this stream? That is a big question. I think that today we cannot live without laptops and online conferences. Since you mentioned I am an expert on sustainability, I think that sustainability does not imply us coming back on the trees, on trees. Uh, but uh, we are obliged to reduce our carbon footprint. A laptop will be in our lives, but it should contain less toxic substances and has uh, and have um, smaller carbon fruit footprint. Many companies turn their back to this issue, and it uh, is only lately that uh, the debate has started to develop. Now uh, I will give um, the second question to Karolina, who is an expert on toxic chemicals and toxic waste. So when my laptop or telephone are too old, can't be repaired, I throw them away. Where? As we've heard, electronic waste together with used cars started to be sorted as one of the first 
categories of waste. In most cases, we return them back to producers, which is an act regulated by the European legislation. This category of waste must be sorted um, because electronics contain heavy metals such as lead, cadmium or other very toxic substances. As a result, um, these chemicals were prohibited gradually and their use in electronics was and at the same time, uh, we started to discuss uh, what happens afterwards when uh, we throw it away to one designated place, then it should be sorted in a due manner. However, the whole process is very complicated and difficult. Recyclation is an ideal solution, but in the real life it is uh, for electronics economically uh, really inconvenient. So, as a result, between 15 to 50 percent of electronic waste is exported from the European Union elsewhere. And we can't really do much about that because uh, it is um, caused by a loophole and it is tolerated by the current legislation. I think it is high time to launch this discussion because uh, technologies and their use have been on the rise now and they are highly uh, dangerous with uh, the pandemic. Some of us who are lucky can work remotely and we spend hours and hours online. We can only go outside to relax and paradoxically when we are online we think we protect our planet, we consume less fuel, uh, fossil fuels, but we still produce carbon footprint to some extent. So, Viktor, tell me, this digital industry, um, what, is, what is its carbon footprint? It might be surprising, but it really is not a green or clean industry, according to estimates that are quite rough, because it is pretty deli delicate to uh, set it right. But I, the IT sector accounts for roughly 3% of uh, global emissions, which can be compared to um, the sea transport, those huge freight boats uh, transporting thousands of tons of goods. So it is comparable or comparable to the air transport sector before the COVID-19 pandemic, also about 3% of global emissions. And emissions uh, have been on the rise by, as a result of ours moving it to the online spaces. So really not, we have not erased our global carbon footprint. I have one more question. When we are more online now, we use less cars, industries have slowed down. So emissions are worse or better at the end of the day? The truth is that this year, for the first time after World War II, emissions will decrease. The decrease was estimated at about 
10% um, in the spring time, uh, but then it started to increase due to China's activity. However, still the, the decrease, uh, estimated decrease, is not sufficient. What is uh, important really to the decrease is that uh, traveling has become much, uh, more, much more rare and transportation by plane has decreased by roughly 30 percent. Since we are at home now, our energy consumption will probably increase, plus offices are not closed down, heating goes on, the fact that the buildings were built persists and offices, some of them keep working, keep being in operation. So, yes, there will be a decrease, but the cost obviously is not acceptable. Now I'll give uh, the floor to Karolina. We use highly sophisticated technology in the West, but uh, this technology gadgets are um, made in the countries of the third world using dangerous um, substances, substances. Plus, production has been on the rise with new and new models flooding the market. And then, as a result, a large volume of weight is exported to the developing world. So, what can be done about this, what your organization does in particular? There are several aspects. One of the biggest uh, producers of emissions are the countries from the South Eastern Asia and well this is partly true but actually their products are mostly being used in our Western world so it is the most developed countries that are responsible the European Union the US these uh, countries actually don't do much to change this to create a global system of rules which would change the situation in the less developed countries or less rich countries. Arnica and uh, also we are looking at the huge ecological but also social impact uh, which is connected to this. It has big social implications. Uh, and 15 to 50 percent of electronic waste end up outside the European Union because it is cheap. It is cheaper than keeping it within the European Union, treating it, recycling it. So often there are shadow ways of getting rid of waste. And a lot of this waste ends up in dumps. Projects are uh, being created, uh, partnerships in Africa, in Thailand, in Indonesia and elsewhere. Uh, by the way, China uh, forbid importing plastic waste and also other kinds of waste that happened in 2015 because they discovered that they could no more breathe this polluted air they had and they need to be more neutral uh, because they have to limit uh, this, uh, waste which was imported to China. Therefore, uh, the importation to China stopped and uh, the waste is being imported to Thailand, Indonesia or Africa. Surprisingly, they still uh, want to have some of the second-hand uh, electronics for their uh, use, but at the same time there are many um, gadgets or electronic devices that can no more be used, that end up in landfills, uh, pieces of old cars, 
And there are people who come up with hammers who try to extract precious metals or precious parts of these devices in a very primitive way and then recycle them. And of course, um, the environmental impact of this is disastrous. To give you an example, we measure the toxic uh, substances. We look at indicators of pollution uh, because the chain of food is also uh, affected. And we saw uh, that um, in Africa, the pollution was 220 times bigger than in Europe. This is really striking. And a big role, an important role is played by the governments of the developed countries. Um, Africa isn't part of international agreements, but today uh, within the UN there are uh, international treaties, international conventions that uh, prohibit uh, producing such or uh, getting rid of such dangerous toxic substances. The European Union, unfortunately, often wanted to have conditions that would be favorable to them. And I think the solution is uh, if the European consumers, European voters, put pressure on their governments. Maybe also in Australia or in the US if the government changes. So if the consumers try to have to introduce new law that would um, look at the export of prohibited substances so that it makes it possible in the economic uh, sense to recycle in an economical and economically profitable way because uh, there is no demand for these used products. The recycling is so demanding and so difficult that it isn't really uh, profitable and cannot be, cannot stand the competition. Okay, I would like to uh, have a look at a different topic now. I will speak to Viktor. There is this injustice or unbalance, imbalance. Uh, is it also the case uh, with uh, carbon footprint? Is it uh, evenly distributed in the world or not really? What are the principles that govern the carbon footprint? Well. Unfortunately, it is more or less the same. The biggest producers of greenhouse uh, gases are the US. And of course, one thing is uh, what we produce or what we release now. And another thing is what we have uh, released so far. For example, if our ancestors uh, released a lot of emissions, they of course still remain in the atmosphere. And what we are doing now will have impact over hundreds or a hundred of years. So, the, the industrial countries actually started um, producing a lot of emissions, releasing them into at the atmosphere, and I think that the Czech Republic holds the 12th position in the world, which is shocking given uh, our population. But of course we have been an industri industrial country for a long time, so we have even more responsibility than we are told by our politicians. And actually the emissions have impact on those who aren't really responsible for releasing them. For example, island states in the Pacific Ocean with uh, small altitudes and actually it is only a question of time for them to disappear.
Maybe this will happen at the end of the 21st century. They will be flooded. And it is not their fault. They only are responsible for not only percents of emissions. Of course, it's not such a responsibility as goes to China, the US or European countries. They cannot really change the situation. So there is this uh, unbalance. But unfortunately, this is the world we live in, and then it is difficult to reach consensus because every country is trying to pursue their own goals. And therefore, we are so unsuccessful in uh, keeping our commitments uh, in which regard climate change. Yes, uh, to pick up on that, it is really interesting that these island states suffer from huge impact also in the field of toxic substances because some of these substances are called persistent organic substances. They uh, remain in the oceans, they are gathered and they are at the very top of the food chain. They are eaten by the fish and these states are often dependent on fishery. Therefore, uh, a lot of these toxic substances end up in these island states. And uh, also, these toxic substances uh, are accumulated at the poles because of the circulation in the oceans. So there is a huge impact near the poles. In, and also, uh, we have a heritage from the past. For example, uh, we look at the um, appearance of DDT, a substance which was prohibi prohibited years ago, but is still present in the ecosystems. So there is this heritage of the past, which remains. And if we prohibit something, it doesn't mean the problem is solved, because we will still encounter it. Also, if you buy food at the supermarket, it can still contain these toxic substances. Now, Viktor, let's speak again about the invisible emissions, uh, which are caused by the digital world. Is it worth considering whether we should be more modest? Be more modest as consumers, give up meat, uh, fly less. Do you think this makes sense and this applies also to the digital world? Maybe should I consider whether I send this email, whether I send this attachment? Uh, will this have ethic implications? Well, yes, I think uh, the principles are similar, but uh, we only uh, realize it now. For a long time, this industry uh, was considered clean, but then it had such a big impact on the environment that we realized the situation was really different. When we use networks, for example, one email amounts to four grams of CO2, which uh, is difficult to imagine. But when you also when you add attachment, it is more. And by the way, a streamed uh, video uh, amounts or accounts to 1.6 kilograms of CO2. So that's already something. For example, if you watch 10 hours on YouTube or on a stream, this is uh, just as uh, just as if you uh, traveled 500 kilometers by car. Many um, uh, digital giants like Facebook uh, try to pretend that they will reduce their footprint by 2030. And if they do it, if they use clean green servers, then this software 
will have significantly smaller carbon footprint, but still there is the question of hardware. And also there are uh, billions of kilometers of cables. These questions that we cannot really solve at the moment, we cannot save uh, energy in this domain. We don't know how to uh, bring the economy to a cycle. It is uh, difficult for us to extract raw materials, then we transport them, then we uh, make electronics out of them, we use them, and then, for example, uh, such a laptop, of course, has a significant uh, carbon footprint. And if you change laptops or cell phones uh, every six months, this, of course, increases uh, the carbon, carbon footprint. For example, if you have an electronic device which uh, weights uh, 150 grams, it has a carbon, carbon footprint of 72 kilograms of CO2. We are still trying to contain uh, the heating under the 2 uh, degrees Celsius, but at the moment uh, we are not getting there. Okay, and now we will see a little survey which was shot with uh, people from Ihlava. Do you know? Do you know how much energy your mobile or computer uses? I think that my PC uses quite a lot of energy. My mobile phone also because we charge it quite frequently. Maybe one charging is not that consuming, not that much as a washing machine, but we only use it once a week. I think that compared to domestic appliances, it's not that big, not negligible, I think. I have no idea. I have never tried to count it, and it's a pity. Well, I don't know, actually. I hope it's not that much compared to, I don't know, the clothing industry. No idea, really. I don't know. Well, I just roughly, I don't know, tens of watts. A lot, I think, but I really don't know. I, I don't know. I know so many figures everywhere that I really don't know. I don't know, but a lot, I think. And I wouldn't mind losing it, actually. It was a nice final point of the survey. Thank you for the survey. And Victor, you tell us what are the constituents of a carbon footprint apart from the production of appliances? What actually releases carbon into the atmosphere when sending a text message, for instance? How can we imagine, picture this? It is all the infrastructure behind. It is not the, it is not the charger, um, which indeed only consumes 5 or 10 watts. And in one hour, the phone is um, charged. For laptop, it is similar. But the biggest problem lies in those huge servers, which are highly energy consuming. I saw that in Europe, the IT sector consumes about 10% of the overall energy consumption, which is huge. And just the streaming video um, account, videos account for 
this paints footprint, which really are not negligible figures, and they have been on the rise since more and more people connect to the network, and um, that also means there are many, many more servers. The good news is that it is easier to reduce its carbon footprint because the servers can um, consume renewable energy. There have been investments in this regard. The producers have been investing in um, renewable energy supply. So, and electricity generation is one constituent and then production of all the materials, of all the appliances, where I think it will be much more difficult to reduce. I checked with Apple and direct emissions by Apple are now at 1%, uh, where the most accountable are the, the Apple's uh, suppliers, so about 76% of uh, the Apple's footprint come from Asia. In the Apple offices, um, it is practically neutral, it will be easy for them to replace the appliances, but the whole chain will be much more difficult to reform. Karolina, uh, in light of the new European Green Deal, we have heard that the Czech industry should uh, be modernized, we should be ready for modernization, industry for zero, smart cities, the Internet of Things. Smart solutions are expected to be more and more present in our everyday life. How can we live um, in the technological advances, continue in them without producing those huge volumes of waste? What are the possible solutions? There are quite a few. The first thing is the so-called circular economy, which changes the rules of the global consumption and production in the sense that it uh, is much better to produce products of longer life cycles. Currently, we produce especially electronics, which last for two years in average. Some products are deliberately produced in this uh, short life cycle way, or we, pr we buy products because of their brand and then we need to change them to have the newest model because it also asserts to our social status. The current economic model is dependent on huge, consum on huge consumption. The biggest problem now is that we do not take into account negative externalities of those products. Glo carbon footprint, environment, environmental burden. When we produce those um, devices, we pollute the air, the soil, water. And companies, the producing companies do not pay for this. We should include, however, those uh, final externalities, those trade-offs that we pay. Currently, moreover, the companies are reluctant to change this attitude. And um, today, I think the only uh, solution is to force and oblige the companies to start including these negative externalities in the price stack.
No, mě teda jako, když nad tím uvažuju, napadá, že... When I think about this, it seems that all these solutions are targeted at minimizing our consumption and they are not synonymous with the traditional economic growth. While this attitude in many countries is still quite unpopular. It is not the case in some rare countries, but um, other, in, our, in our context, I don't think it is popular. I have one follow-up question. Do we really want a new model of mobile phone every year? Maybe with mobile phone it's different, but what about our domestic appliances? I don't want to buy a new washing machine every year. The same goes for clothing. I prefer clothing which lasts longer than one season. The same goes for packaging. Uh, do I really need products in three different layers of packaging? I really um, think this is just marketing strategy uh, which tries to persuade us that we couldn't live otherwise. But is it really the case? Couldn't we live without uh, three-layered packaging? Couldn't we be bringing our own containers, plastic containers, when we go to take food out? Do we really need all that waste? This current economic model is bad from its own foundations. The economic foundations are bad. We need some courageous politicians who will say that changing today's attitude will not make our lives more difficult. We currently use technologies um, much more because of the coronavirus crisis. It has its um, inconvenience, but also many plus sites you can connect with people from all over the world. What I really don't like is that the narrative goes that we couldn't live otherwise. It is not true. And also, I want to emphasize that the consumer plays a crucial role, not only in reducing his or her carbon footprint, but mainly in showing uh, the possible ways for the current economic model to evolve into. Currently, we don't have uh, absolutely free choices depending on the countries we live in when it comes to choosing products. But when I have the option, I can uh, I can choose products. However, it really is it really depends on my economic and social status. What I feel is that uh, the whole narrative should change. Politicians should assume responsibility and mainly the new narrative and rhetoric, rhetorics, because those arguments that I have just outlined should also be heard. In some in, in some ways, we should go back to our roots because our ancestors didn't really need that much waste to survive. What I really think is that um, all those rolls of toilet paper in plastic is it necessary? <laughs> so, Karolina, I like that you are on fire now. Victor seems to be intrigued too. We have opened a topic which is closely long linked to technological development, uh, industrial revolution, which uh, has had massive impact on the climate. 
And the climate deteriorates just as the volume of uh, CO2 and gas, greenhouse, greenhouse gases, um, increases. Can we expect um, technological solutions to reduce it or not? Great question. All the plans for mitigating the climate crisis, which will really make your lives uh, more difficult, all these plans uh, work uh, with the premise that we will extract the gases back from the atmosphere and store them somewhere in the ground. Um, it is all very energy consuming, but it is uh, already set forth in policies and strategies. I wouldn't be that skeptical in terms terms of technological solutions to this problem. I like the example of the food sector because 25 percent of greenhouse, greenhouse gases um, um, are linked to our food consumption. Uh, really don't think that, uh, in, however, that the ecological agriculture will solve the problem. It will be technology. It will be technology which will enable us maximizing and increasing our food production. I agree with Carolina, we need to dematerialize our current mindsets. And I can see that already happening. The current generation wants to reduce its um, carbon footprint and it is no longer interested in having 60 different brands of toilet paper. The biggest problem for me is the rest of the world, um, this uh, so-called developing world, because there, this revolution has not taken place yet. And it will be quite difficult for us to uh, convince them to skip the phase that we had the luxury to go through. Uh, that is why um, in the past uh, the developing world had the least, uh, the, the lowest footprint, but now they are catching up really fast. I'm concerned about the rest of the world. At the same time, I don't know how to convince the developing uh, countries to do otherwise. Let us remain here in the safe, developed Central Europe. When my uh, mobile phone cannot be used anymore, Carolina, tell me, if I want to buy a new one, what should I take into account to, to be ethically correct? Well, you can choose companies that went further in their environmental policies. Uh, electronics is produced by huge companies and these uh, transnational corporations are rich enough to um, go beyond the applicable legislation which means that um, they also want to attract uh, new customers. Um, they use recycled materials, they recycle their own waste, they use solely safe materials with no toxic su substances. You can choose from these using different rankings that are readily available on many websites. Um, it must be noted, however, that their products are much more expensive. That is why not anybody 
not any anyone can afford to buy them. Um, the best uh, solution would, however, be to reduce new purchases. But if you have to, choose wisely. One thing are uh, this are these global companies, but our economy is full of smaller local companies who cannot be compared to the digital the giants, um, who are much uh, more capable of negotiating good conditions with their suppliers from Asia. Uh, it is much more difficult for a small Czech company and in this regard I really think in the importance of well-designed legislation not only valid in the European Union but also applying to all over the world and other uh, countries suppliers it should include those fair trade certifications as a condition Laws should be designed in a way that they would protect not the large players, but also the small and vulnerable. So if uh, the carbon footprint isn't taken into account and if uh, the products that are cheap have a big carbon footprint, there is no way out. Okay, we have received a question from our audience, from Kateřina Smejkalová. In this respect, how should we approach different technological solutions to the climate crisis? What if these solutions actually consume so much energy and so much uh, raw materials that it is not really a solution? Okay, maybe this is a question for Viktor. Well, I think uh, their role is rather positive. If there are 10 billion people on the planet, which I think is quite probable, without technology we won't be able to cut down our emissions. We have gone so far uh, that it is impossible. This spring we managed to reduce our carbon footprint by 10%, but we need to reduce it by 90%. China, Japan and uh, mainly uh, all the countries want to do this, except Trump's United States, but it is impossible. We need to create renewable energy. We cannot just stop using fuels, stop using energy, but we need to use different fuels renewables, maybe sophisticated biofuels, uh, hydrogen fuels, and so on. So I don't think we can do without technologies, but it can go hand in hand with dematerialization. This is a new trend, which I hope will remain. And, uh, of course, it has very good uh, implications when it comes to carbon footprint. We will simply realize that we need much less products than it is told to us. Yes, just to complete that, the climate change uh, is also re related to uh, the issue of plastics. At the moment, the plastics are used uh, in um, uh, for producing energy, and now we are looking for other uses uh, of creating uh, materials, and plastics are going to be used probably. So probably the consumption of plastics will uh, rise for times by 2050. And this actually goes against this dematerialization. Maybe to resolve this, there should be a tax imposed on plastics because these materials are too cheap and it is uh, the prices don't reflect their environmental impact. So no other materials uh, actually 
uh, can uh, be more fa seen as uh, comparably favorable when it comes to the price. If you, for example, are looking for materials uh, for construction, for producing clothing, producing dishes, these products are, are now being made of plastics and uh, it is difficult to uh, recycle or, or decompose plastics. One third of uh, the waste um, is plastic waste and you cannot incinerate plastics. You can only recycle plastic materials twice or three times and then they aren't usable anymore. Also, their quality deteriorate, deteriorates over the process. So the re recycling of plastic materials is complicated. We keep uh, producing more and more plastic products, but we don't really take into account what will happen uh, when we no more when we don't use them anymore. Uh, many of them will end up in the oceans, for example. So this is a big issue. And I think it is worth considering because our economic system needs to be dramatically changed. Okay, let's speak about the circular economy. You said that it is not ideal to recycle plastics and often uh, toxic substances are being released in organisms that come into contact with plastic materials. Well, in what sense a circular economy could work? maybe also with regard to digital technologies. What is the direction that would be ideal? Well, uh, we are speaking of eco-design and there is a new European directive which tries to encourage companies to think about what happens with the product when it uh, becomes waste. For example, and of course it is costly, but um, laptops or uh, cell phones uh, that are used with aluminium uh, can be uh, easier when uh, we sort them or can be sorted in, a, in an easier way. So you need to think about what happens with the product at the end of uh, its lifespan when you design it. Also, uh, you need to uh, prepare parts that can uh, serve to repair the device. Because at the moment, uh, we don't really repair our devices when they are broken. And this, again, is a big change as opposed to the past when, when a thing broke down, it was repaired. Now we only throw these things away, and uh, this is a complete change of mindset. We should really think of introducing a label for the products, labels uh, regarding the energy consumption, which are already used, for example, for freezers and so on. So there would be these labels, and also these devices should have longer lifespans. They should be cheaper. They should be, there should be economic incentives uh, so that products that can last for a longer time are cheaper. Victor, and maybe let's try to come up with an idea uh, for our audience. What can they do? What can they do as consumers? How to reduce their footprint? Uh, well, uh, there is the material uh, aspect 
let's not buy new devices uh, too often. And also there is the operational aspect. Let's look at where you buy electricity or energy. Uh, try using renewable energy and try using local energy producers, not foreign ones. It is really simple today to check it, to look for information and to change it. In this way, uh, you can directly reduce your carbon footprint. Then, you can look at the company uh, that stores my data or your data. So there are producers, but there are also these providers that have carbon footprints. And uh, there are different kinds of providers. Some of them are responsible and green. Some of them don't really care. So let's try using Green Cloud, which has much smaller carbon footprint. Or move to uh, Norway, and the servers in Norway uh, operate in much lower uh, temperatures, uh, so they don't have such a big carbon footprint as uh, servers that are operating in the Czech Republic. No, I was just kidding. But still, we should be thinking about this, because also the place where you live influences your carbon footprint if it's in the Czech Republic, in Poland, in Norway. With the same uh, kind of behavior, you have different kinds of carbon footprint. By the way, what is your opinion on virtual currencies, which uh, are often connected to hardware they are stored uh, at cold areas. What do you think about these virtual currencies? I'm not sure. I don't know what is the financial usability of such currencies, but speaking about their carbon footprint, yes, uh, there are estimates that um, these currencies actually uh, caused uh, a rise in emissions, but uh, maybe this will help decentralize uh, energy storage, for example, uh, or energy use. Uh, if I produce some solar energy, uh, maybe I could sell it to a neighbor who needs to store uh, his or her uh, virtual currency. At the moment, it is difficult with photovoltaics here in the Czech Republic. You need to pay for the transfer for such energy. and. Uh, it can be changed, but it hasn't been done so far. So in this way, you could uh, sell your surpluses of solar energy, for example, to your neighbors. This could be interesting in the, in the case of virtual currencies. Maybe uh, my neighbors would then pay me in one way or another. And this could be part of this dematerialized, decentralized new world. Okay. I hope we made the emissions more visible during this debate because they aren't often mentioned when we just keep using our cell phones and laptops. I'm happy that the issue was really, really now stands out and I would like to ask our guests if they want to add something. I was thinking about this topic, invisible emissions. Well, it is really difficult to intuitively realize how much emissions we are producing. For example, now when we sit in the studio, for example, one ton of CO2, or, or here in the studio, there might be four tons of CO2, and we cannot really feel it. In this very room where I'm sitting, there are four tons of CO2. 
Proč so to tak se maybe uh, this is why it is so difficult for us to imagine and to change because we don't really know, we don't really see these emissions, but we still need to uh, cut down them, cut them down because otherwise our life on this planet cannot continue. Maybe in 200 years uh, there will be 10 billion people and yeah, maybe I think uh, the invisible character also applies to toxic substances. So maybe Karolina would like to say something. Yes, the emissions are invisible, but a lot of toxic substances remain on the planet and they actually enter our bodies. This is an important uh, thing, for example, for women, because our children, our fetuses, also con contain these toxic substances. They are being born with four uh, kinds of toxic substances which are already banned. We think they might be somewhere in the countries of the third world, but no, they are very present. They are in our bodies, they are in our products that we consume. And they have different effects, uh, spreading from autism, cancers, and different troubles that we have now. So we want to do away with them because they not only change our life on this planet but also our health. Even those who uh, aren't uh, environment friendly or don't really think about ecology should realize the impact on our health and on our bodies. Thank you to Viktor Trzebicki and Karolina for taking part in this discussion, which is part of the Hlava Documentary Film Festival. Now I would like to say goodbye to our viewers and also I'd like to recommend you to watch uh, the following debate in the same uh, section in the rhythm of algorithm. Goodbye.